Hi everyone! Happy spring! I'm so happy that you're here to have another story time with me. Uh, I'm Miss Kim and I'm going to have story time to go with you today. That means it's a special story time because we are going to share a story and we're going to talk about some things and then if you haven't already done so you can go by the library and you can pick up a bag that has the story in it and some fun things to do. So um, I will tell you what's in your bag at the end of the story time, all right? But first, let's talk about what we're going to read and what we're going to be learning about today. So I'm gonna move over here so you can see my board. Up on the top is the book we're going to read today. It's called The Salamander Room. It's a very good book. I think you're gonna enjoy it. And this has a big word on it. And the word says, habitat. Habitat, and we're going to learn what a habitat is. Um, do any of you know what a habitat might be? Well, I will tell you the way I think of a habitat. A habitat is a place where a creature lives, where they have everything they need to be healthy and happy. That's what a habitat is. So um, animals and especially wild animals have what we call habitats that they live in, where they have everything that they need. So today we're gonna to read a book about a habitat and we're gonna learn about a little creature called a salamander. Do you, have you ever seen a salamander? Do you know that we actually do have salamanders here? If you haven't seen one, we do have them here and they live under, um, they like it where it's wet and they like to live under rocks and logs. So they might live by a stream. Um, and they are called amphibians. And an amphibian is a creature that can live in the land and in the water. So a salamander is an amphibian. So you can't really see these pictures very well, but they are salamanders. But you can see this picture, because I'm going to get very close. This is a cute little salamander. And the book is called The Salamander Room. And it is written by Anne Mazur. She's the author, remember that's who writes the story. And it's illustrated by Steve Johnson and Lou Fancher. What does illustrated mean? Do you remember? It means that those are the people that drew the pictures or painted the pictures. And you're gonna see with this book, there's some really beautiful paintings. So let's get started. This little salamander is, can you see the color? He's orange. Yeah, orange, and it looks like he has black spots. Okay, let's learn about salamanders. This book is by Dragonfly Books. The Salamander Room. Oh, I have to share one more thing with you. Very special. My daughter, when she was little, when she was a little girl, she's a grown up now, but when she was a little girl, this was her very favorite book. She loved it so much. So I hope you do too. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Brian found a salamander in the woods. It was a little orange salamander that crawled through the dried leaves of the forest floor. The salamander was warm and cozy in the boy's hand. Come and live with me, Brian said, and he took the salamander home. You see the little salamander there? He's in the woods and he's very happy where he's at. But Brian wants to take him home. Where will he sleep? His mother asked. I will make him a salamander bed to sleep in. I will cover him with leaves that are fresh and green, and I will bring moss that looks like little stars to be a pillow for his head. And I will bring crickets to sing to him and sing him to sleep and bullfrogs to tell him goodnight stories.
Where does he have the salamander? You see where he's at? It's in his little drawer. It looks like he put some leaves in there and he's trying to make him feel comfortable. And when he wakes up, where will his where will he play? His mother asked. I will carpet my room with shiny wet leaves and water them so he can slide around and play. And I will bring tree stumps into my room so he can climb up on the bark and sun himself on top. And I will bring boulders that he can creep over. Boulders, do you know what a boulder is? What's a boulder? A boulder is like a rock. It's a rock. Usually a, when we say boulder, we mean a big rock. Yeah. Well, he will miss his friends in the forest, says mother. I will bring salamander friends to play with him, says Brian. Look at this picture. What do you think the salamander is feeling right now? He's looking out the window, isn't he? I wonder, I wonder maybe, maybe the salamander is missing his friends. Cause it kind of looks a little sad there, huh? Like he might be missing being outside. Mother says, well, they will be hungry. How will you feed them? I will bring insects to live in my room and every day I will catch some and feed the salamanders, and I will make little pools of water on top of the boulders so they can drink whenever they are thirsty. It sounds like he's thinking of a lot of really good ideas that will help the salamanders feel at home, huh? So the insects will multiply, and soon there will be bugs and insects everywhere, says mother. I will find birds to eat the extra bugs and the insects, and the bullfrogs will eat them too. That's a great idea, because we know that birds like to eat insects. What's happening in this picture? What's happening? Brian is opening it up, isn't he? He's opening the window to let everything come in. Where will the birds and the bullfrogs live? I will bring trees for the birds to roost in and make ponds for the frogs. Now tell me what's happening to his room. I, it's changing, isn't it? It's looking a lot different. I still see his bed and I see his dresser and his toys and a book. But what else is in there now? Trees, trees and lots of nature. It's looking a little bit different than his room now, isn't it? It's looking more and more like outside in the forest, isn't it? Birds need to fly. We can lift off the ceiling. They will sail out into the sky, but they will come back to my room when it is time for dinner because they will know that the biggest, juiciest insects are there. Oh my, now it's really looking like outside. What if you could lift off your ceiling and open it up? What do you think about that? What could you do? If you, if you could lift the ceiling off of your room, what would you see? You'd see the sky, you could see the clouds and the sun, mm -hmm. 
And at nighttime, nighttime, yep, you could see the stars and the moon. But it also, it could rain, right? Or maybe snow in your room. Let's see, let's see what happens here. But the trees, how will the trees grow, asked Mother. The rain, the rain will come through the open roof and the sun too. And vines will creep up the walls of my room and ferns will grow under my bed. And there will be big white mushrooms and moss like little stars growing around the tree stumps that the salamanders climb on. And you, where will you sleep? asked mother. I will sleep on a bed under the stars with the moon shining through the green leaves of the trees. Owls will hoot and crickets will sing. And next to me on the boulder with its head resting on soft moss, the salamander will sleep. So what happened here? Brian's room doesn't really look like it did before at all, does it? No, it looks like a forest now, doesn't it? It looks like he's sleeping in the forest. Do you think, do you think that might be because the salamander, his habitat, his best habitat is in the forest, isn't it? Yeah, and Brian was trying to make a habitat. Remember our word habitat over here? He was trying to make a habitat for the little salamander. And he ended up making it just like outside because that is the perfect habitat for a little salamander. So that is the end I have one more picture to share with you of Brian sleeping next to his little salamander friend. Okay, that is the end. All right, so I hope you had fun with that book and remember to come by the library and get a kit that has one of these books in it for you and also it has a little craft kit in it these are to make binoculars do you know what binoculars are binoculars are things that you make that you look through and they make things look closer so you can make some so that you can go out into the woods and you can look through your binoculars and see what you can see. Maybe you'll see a habitat like the salamander lived in. And then also you have a little notepad with some paper and you have a little pencil. And so you can write down what you see. I'd like you to go out and go on a walk, go with your family and go out into nature somewhere and take your time and be quiet and listen and look through your binoculars and see what you see. And you might be surprised, you might see a salamander and you could write that you saw a salamander in your tablet or you could draw a picture of a salamander. Um, and you might see a lot of other animals as well. And you could talk about what is the habitat that the animals live in, okay? All right, and parents, um, Remember that when you if, you, if you don't get one of our kits, um, you can still do this, of course. And remember that whenever uh, children are writing, um, even in the very beginning, when it doesn't look a lot like writing, it is practicing for writing. So um, just let them do whatever they want and you can help them to write sometimes, but definitely let them do it. Um, and just ask them what it is that they wrote. Or they could draw a picture and you could write down what they said the picture was. Um, also, um, I would like to just remind all the parents that it takes, it, it can take up to 12 seconds 
for a preschool age child to formulate an answer to a question. So just remember that when you're reading a book like The Salamander Room and you ask a question in the book, um, give your child time to think about the answer and, and, and then formulate their answer and, and, and tell you. Um, just make sure you give them plenty of time because it does take a little while for them to process all of that information and think of an answer. All right, so everybody have a great day and I hope that you can go out for a nature walk and I hope you can see some fun animals in their natural habitat. Thanks, bye-bye.